Hi everyone, it's week number two for me here in the elder care facility that I've been hanging out in. Uh, and if you've been following my posts, you'll know that I've immersed myself as an elder in a facility to know exactly how the elderly are taken care of and what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, um, the fact that m many institutions in Singapore um, are uh, doing the best that they can. And um, in no way, I think, has this project ever been about calling other people out or criticizing what's already been done. But there are some really, really important conversations that need to be had, and I don't see them have, I don't see these conversations being had at all, ever. I think what we're doing is we're just throwing uh, money and systems and um, a kind of logic that doesn't have any heart and soul at the problem be it hospitals that are increasing the number of beds and wards, um, be it homes that are being built to accommodate the elderly. All you're doing really at the end of the day is accommodating the body. You are not accommodating the mind or the soul or the heart. Um, and let's take it a step further back. I've had so many conversations with people who have had gainful employment until they had a stroke or um, dementia started to set in. And we are a first world country. We're very cash rich. It feels that the sensitivity, though, of my country, this is my home, the sensitivity feels like it has been reduced so greatly over the years that it doesn't seem to feel like the groups that make the decisions and, you know, invite people into focus groups and, 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 and the powers that be are not thinking with here. There is a possibility to think here and here. It's called being philosophical and it's called being emotionally intelligent and I think that we need to start to approach this as our population continues to age we aren't going to be having lots and lots of babies but we are going to be having lots and lots of grandparents or not grandparents we're going to have lots of our parents I've also had a lot of conversations with people who are caregivers and um, what I've been doing here is really ironically what a caregiver needs to be both immersed in the activity with enough knowledge to understand how it affects the older person, as well as to be an observer so that you can be the best judge of how to take it forward. I will forever be a person who does not accept facilities for people to live in as the first line of defense against aging, against, um, uh, against memory loss, uh, against physical immobility, and against things like dementia and Alzheimer's. I think that what is lacking is a few things. Number one, a truly open, a truly organic, and a truly expansive discourse on what it is to age in Singapore. Next, there isn't anything that I can call positive and um, permanent resource for caregivers. So many people go from hospital to home and have absolutely no idea, and hospitals do not show you how to take care of your older person. Number three, at the hospital level, I think, the hospitals and care facilities need to immerse themselves in each other's activities. So that if, for any reason, a person is unable to take care of someone at home, that you have both a certain level of medical experience that is pertinent to the person staying in your home, your grandparent or your parent, and you have a certain amount of care experience. I mean, what I have witnessed here has been both the good and the not so good. And by that I mean there is way room for improvement at every level in every care facility. It certainly doesn't help to see collective writing or collective letters that say, you know, we've basically done our best and we've improved things. Well, I think we can always improve. I think we can start the ball rolling by having a conversation. Yes, it comes down to money. We need to have the conversation about how much money does it take to run facilities? And is that money better spent by actually providing services that people who would rather have their parents with them at home, services that people could dip into. This is a huge, huge, important, important conversation. And personally, after this experience of just one week and having been a caregiver for the last 10 years of my life, I am not gonna let this go. This is an important conversation. We need to keep, continue to have this conversation. We need to keep our eyes and ears and especially our hearts very, very, very much open. Otherwise, we're just as good as putting our elderly in coffins.